Welcome back to part three of July's So Fun. I have more projects to show you and I hope you'll enjoy. This is the Jangles Anchor Bag uh, by Mrs. H. This bag, first thing you'll notice is it's a nice kind of feature on the front. I made this bag, the outside is entirely made out of cork and then it's just lined with a regular cotton. Things to note when working with cork, it's super easy. It is beautiful to sew. The only adjustment I made uh, was I used a top stitch needle, so one that is much sharper than your regular universal needle. Top stitch needles also have a larger eye, which is a totally necessary um, when you're just doing regular sewing and sewing with regular thread, but I find it helps me avoid any sort of thread tangles or problems that I might encounter. So a top stitch needle was really helpful. And then other things to remember when working with cork, uh, if you have to make any marks on it, definitely use a chalk that you can brush away with your hand. Friction markers do not disappear. I made a couple of marks, luckily they got covered by my straps here, but as I was pressing, those marks don't even slightly disappear, they just turn a different color. So do not use friction markers on cork. And you can press cork, you can press it on a medium heat, it's not going to hurt anything. However, it doesn't hold a crease. So for most things, I found myself just finger pressing instead of bothering to go to the ironing board because it would just pop open by the time I got back to my cutting table to clip things anyway. So it doesn't hold a crease, use a sharper needle. And for top stitching especially, increase your stitch length. For my regular construction stitches, I didn't make any changes uh, while I was stitching things together. So the bag itself has these two front pieces here. These are called Long John Anchors, and we did order those in in the gold and a gunmetal color for you. Emmeline Bags, who makes this hardware, has it available in a ton of different metal finishes. Um, but we just ordered in the gold and the gunmetal for now. The stores can probably get you a different color if you really want it though, just ask. So the Long John Anchors are the big draw for these. And then on the front of the bag, there's also some decorative rivets. Um, the rivets on the handles are not decorative. That's actually what holds them together, which is nice because sewing through, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 10 layers of cork, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Um, so the rivets are what holds your handles together. They're just decorative on the front. And if you're like me and you visit handbag Facebook groups, a lot of people talk about using rivets and they get this special rivet press or some sort of heavy duty thing. You don't need any sort of special tools to put these in. There is a rivet tool, another thing that we also ordered in for you guys, that's just, if you've ever put in grommets, similar to the grommet or the snap tool. Has a little circular anvil that you set one half of the rivet in and then a rod that fits over the top on the other side and you just hammer it in place. Give it a few good whacks and the rivets will snap together and hold really well. And finally, what really drew me to this bag 
is this zipper piping. So you actually use a zipper. Uh, I ordered in zipper by the yard and this nice gold finish. It's not actually metal though, so you can sew over it without breaking any needles. And you just pull the zipper apart and use the two halves to make a piping instead. So really unique accent for the front of your bag. The inside of the bag has a zipper divider pocket. If you've ever made the Pro Tote, it's similar to that where it separates the two halves of the bag. You have this nice little, almost like a file pocket to stick things in. The zip pocket is done a little bit differently. You put your four pieces of fabric together, stitch the zipper in the middle like you would for any zippered bag. And then you actually fold everything wrong sides out, make like a burrito with the zipper tucked into the center. And you stitch diagonally along the corners, trim off the excess, turn it right side out. So you have these two cut edges, uh, not cut, stitch edges that are diagonal. And then when you sew the lining of the bag together, same sort of shape as this, you line up the bottom of the zip divider with the two sides of your lining. You stitch that bottom part. You stitch the side seams without the zipper divider in it. Just stitch the side seams together. And then when you make your boxed corners, because of those diagonal stitches we made earlier on the divider, it doesn't get caught in there at all. So there's actually a little space between the corners and your zip divider. Um, makes it a lot easier to sew those box corners because you don't have to worry about trying to finagle things that are different sizes together. Uh, there's also a patch pocket on the inside and another zippered pocket on the other side. So lots of storage. The handle here is optional. It's connected with just your standard swivel hooks. And instead of D-rings. I use triangle rings. I like how they look better. I think they're a little bit sturdier and less likely to slip around on my attachments than D-rings are. So the zipper on the top is inset by about three inches or so. Apparently, at least according to the author, that's so you can set a travel umbrella in the top while you're out and about. She is from Britain, so I guess they probably need an umbrella a little more frequently than I do here. So that's why it is inset so far. The top zipper is a handbag zipper. So again, I use the same zipper by the yard that I used for the piping on the front. And then there is this nifty little metal end to finish up your zipper so you can open the bag up wider. We do have these available. It just fits right over the unfinished end of your zipper to act as a stop and then you screw it down in place to hold it nice and tight. I think it's a really elegant finish to a longer zipper. Um, a fabric tab at the end of this zipper I think would have really detracted from the otherwise elegant appearance of this bag. So I'm really glad that uh, I found that handy little notion. So we have those available for you as well. The final tricky bit as with any bag, is turning it right side out once you've sewn the top seam together. The long john anchors don't necessarily make that any easier. In the pattern, she actually tells you you can remove these, so not put them on until the bag is sewn together, which is what I did with mixed results. So these anchors are actually screwed on through the bag itself through the main body of the bag. There's a little washer piece that fits over the back side of it to hold everything together. So I screwed them on when the main bag was still flat to dry fit everything to make sure I knew how it went together. I just used an eyelet punch which came with my machine to punch the holes necessary for those screws. And then as I was getting ready to sew it all together I decided to go ahead and unscrew take the anchors off and put them on after I had shown everything. So I thought the cork was going to be difficult enough to turn right side out. The cork was actually not hard at all to pull through. It's really flexible and malleable, especially if it's a little warm. So that pulled through no problem. I'm questioning 
how much more difficult the anchors would have made it because putting them back on, trying to get my hand through the opening in the lining of the bag and then line everything up and screw it back on. Obviously I was able to do it, but it was a headache and a half. So if you are a little braver than I am, I would recommend just leaving the anchors on and put them on while everything is flat and leave them there. I don't think it'll make turning too much more difficult. And don't worry about scratching up your hardware. They do come with a protective plastic coating on them to keep you from scratching things up. Just leave that on until you're completely done with the bag. This is the Jangles Anchor Bag to kind of reiterate what we have available on your wish list. The rivets are something that you can get through us in gold and gunmetal. You can get the Long John anchors and they come in a set of four. We have the zipper by the yard. We have the little zipper end for you to finish off your zipper. And we have the triangle rings that I used to attach the optional strap. So those are all things that you can get from us. And that's the Jangles bag. Emily Bags, the road trip wallet is a handy little wallet. It comes in two different sizes with three different closure options. So the smaller size is six and a half by four and a half. And the large size, which is what I made, is eight inches by four and a half inches tall. So it's just a difference of how wide it is this way. All of them have a interior ID pocket. It's almost like a little booklet. It's got three zipper sections. Um, this closure option that I did with the little belt look here and then it has a magnetic snap on the inside is only available in the large size and the smaller one you can't fit this magnetic snap and the ID pocket unfortunately. But I think this large size makes a nice little wristlet. The wrist strap is not part of the pattern but it was super easy to add on. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. I used some more of the cork for my accents on this. Let's see. So the card pockets on both sides, going opposite directions, are done in a really interesting way. Most wallets that I've seen in the past, the card pockets are done via some weird like accordion fold method. It can be kind of confusing. There's a lot of pressing involved. Each of these pockets is actually a separate piece of fabric, so you have a little bit more cutting to do, a lot of small pieces, and then it's sewn onto your base fabric, and it makes, you've almost got all these little loops. They're all hanging loose at first. You top stitch everything and then baste it down. Um, that went a lot faster, and they're really sturdy, and I thought it was a lot easier than trying to make all of those folds. So I liked that. The middle ID pocket here does have a vinyl uh, pouch for your ID to go into and then a little coin purse sort of section on it here. This just gets inserted like a little, I guess like a page from a book, when you sew the two halves together. So really easy to input that. The magnetic snap and we have these available, is actually a little bit thinner. It's a thin profile magnetic snap so that when you snap your wallet together, it doesn't have any added bulk. It's still nice and an overall thin profile. For the clear vinyl ID pocket, um, it's such a small piece. You can find scraps of this vinyl all over your house. Uh, if you have any bags laying around from sheet sets, things like that. I had a bag that held some tea towels from Kimberbell that I cut up to make this. Um, so that's a great way to use up some extra scraps. When you stitch this together, you do have to turn everything right side out, as with most kinds of bags, so that you end up with finished edges. The vinyl kind of gets crinkly when that happens. In the pattern, she simply says, don't let it crease when you turn it right side out. And I'm sorry, that's almost impossible. <laughs> so when you inevitably have these little crinkly bits, just take a pressing cloth, Teflon sheet is the best option. Put that over top of it because you're going to need to iron this anyway. And the heat from the iron will kind of soften this up. Be really, really careful. Use a lower heat than you might normally so you don't accidentally melt your vinyl. But the heat from the, the iron will warm up the vinyl and make those creases go away. 
So the top zippers, I actually use handbag zippers. It's more of that zipper by the yard. Um, there is a whole Facebook group dedicated to Emmeline bags, and it is super helpful. The author uh, is really responsive if you have questions. I wasn't sure if using the wider handbag zipper would make a big difference. So I asked on there and she got back to me like within an hour telling me that it would be just fine. So if you have questions, I really recommend their Facebook group. And then for the strap that I added, I just grabbed a little D-ring that I had laying around and some scrap of my cork, tucked it down because normally there is a gap in between these two sides tucked it down in that little gap that's already there, top stitched it in place. So I used the same rivets from the, to hold the cork together, because again, that's just really thick. It's not gonna go through most domestic sewing machines, um, at the very least not easily. So you get a much prettier finish with the rivets here. And that is the Road Trip Wallet. So Speedy Mini Quilt is a wall hanging 32 inch square um paper piece quilt looks like a bunch of sewing needles here is my version it is foundation paper piece so you will need the add a quarter ruler and again that's on your wish list um in the pattern she says that this isn't like a beginner foundation paper piecing pattern Mostly what she means is she's not walking you through step by step exactly how foundation paper piecing works. Um, but she still gives you guidance on how to put everything together, gives you the exact sizes you need to cut out for your um, different paper pieced sections. So the needles, it's really just the head of the needle that's paper pieced. So it's in three sections. There's the middle where the eye of the needle is, the point, and then the barrel, the top of the shaft of the needle um, that are paper pieced. The rest of the quilt is traditionally pieced. If you haven't done paper piecing before, you are actually stitching your fabric directly to a special kind of paper called foundation paper. Um, I like Carol Doak's foundation paper for this kind of quilting and find it tears away easy, um, but it's sturdy enough while you're sewing that it's not falling apart during stitching. So she gives you the exact sizes. So it's, after that, it's kind of like quilt by number. You're gonna follow the numbers on your uh, templates and fill it in one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, you are always working on the back side of your printed paper template and then you actually create your quarter inch seam allowance as you go so it's really precise you get these nice crisp points that can be kind of hard to get with traditional piecing so once you make your three sections you sew the three sections together don't tear away your paper until you finish sewing your three sections together to make sure you still have that perfect quarter inch seam allowance and then tear that away and stitch it to the long shank or shaft of the needle. This wall hanging is jelly roll friendly. So I used a jelly roll to make this. Um, each one of the needles is one jelly roll strip. Got all of my pieces out of that. And then I used the jelly roll for the binding as well as the backing. I just stitched some of the strips together. So a really great way to get a lot of color without having to buy a lot of fabric. And that is the So Speedy Mini Quilt. The Quick Swirling Stars Accessories is a pattern collection of a whole bunch of things for your sewing machine. Most notably is the sewing machine cover, which is customizable for your sewing machine size. Um, there are actually two versions of sewing machine cover on here. There's the version that I made, which covers your machine all the way down to the table. There is also a shorter version if you have an acrylic table for your machine or it sits down into a sewing table, that would be the cover for you. It only goes down to about the top of the bed of your machine instead. 
Um, there's also a sewing machine mat in the pattern. There is a zippered pouch, a pin cushion, and a little wall hanging. Uh, the wall hanging is the only thing that I did not make out of this. So the stars themselves are paper pieced. I'll hold this one up for example. Um, so it's another foundation paper piecing project. If you are not familiar with foundation paper piecing, this is maybe not a good starter project because she does not give you any guidance on how to paper piece. In fact, the author doesn't even tell you what size to cut your pieces for each of the little sections. Um, so you want to have at least one foundation paper piecing project under your belt before you tackle this. It's not hard, but without direction, you know, it's a comfort level thing. Uh, this is a great scrappy project, or if you have charm squares laying around, the charm squares are the perfect size for the background and the stars. So one charm square will actually make two of the stars, since you need two different colors at least for the star section. Um, and you'll make a whole bunch of the stars to then put into the larger projects. So the first and easiest, quickest project in the set is this one. It's supposed to be a pin cushion, but I have a gazillion pin cushions laying around my sewing room already. So I just left it flat and now I have a nice little coaster that I can keep next to my computer, next to my sewing machine. Um, I have much more use for coasters than I do for more pin cushions at this point. So it's just one of your uh, swirling stars pieces with some sashing around it. Do some quick quilting and then stitch it to a back piece and turn it right side out. So very easy, quick finish. Next we have the zippered pouch. So you can make it single sided like I have or you can put stars on both sides. But it's just three stars across, sashing in the middle and some accent fabric along the bottom. The zipper pouch, super straightforward. It is fully lined. Um, and they do have you put box corners in it, which I like. I don't have many zipper pouches that actually stand up on their own like this one does. It's fully quilted and then lined on the inside. So just really nice zipper bag to keep your sewing notions in and keep it handy for traveling projects or just keep it next to your machine. Now we have things for your machine itself. So this is my sewing machine cover. In the instructions, she does have a series of, don't get scared, math formulas that you will need to fill in the measurements of your machine. So you'll want to measure how long your machine is and do include the free arm of your machine, how wide it is front to back, and then how tall it is. When you're making your measurements, give yourself a little bit of extra. Don't forget to include the hand wheel in your measurements, but also give yourself a little bit of extra room. You don't want this to fit so tightly that it's a struggle to put on your machine. So I gave myself probably an inch extra in each of my measurements and it fits perfectly. The front of the cover is just four of the swirling stars sashed together and then offset with large half square triangles to finish off the main center piece. The formulas in the pattern then tell you how big to make these side pieces so that it is long enough for your machine, how tall and how wide to make this little bottom piece so that again it's wide enough and now tall enough for your machine, and how big to make the back section. Because I did mine all out of scraps and have a piece big enough for the back section, so I just pieced two larger pieces of fabric together and got to cameo some of my favorite scraps. And then the last formula is for how big to make these side pieces. Now, when you go to sew your main long piece to the side pieces, Kind of do a dry test before sewing it together, pin it or wonder clip it to make sure that the sides all line up like you want them to. You don't want to have stitched in this piping and have to rip it out. Ask me how I know that. So when I put mine together, my main piece was short for my side pieces. 
by about two inches since I had started at one side and worked around. Luckily, I gave myself that extra inch in my measurements. So when I went back to fix it, I ripped that stitch out, moved it up about an inch on this side piece, split the difference, trimmed off the excess from the too big piece, and it was the perfect size for my machine. So give yourself that extra. That way, if there is a problem, it's still gonna work on your machine. The whole thing is quilted. You're gonna quilt each of your panels before you sew them all together, and then use piping to give it that extra little bit of um, finesse when you sew it together. And then the bottom edges are bound to finish everything up. The pattern calls for decor bond on top of batting inside of this. I thought that was a little bit of overkill. I wanted to just use batting and I made sure that I used straight vertical lines in my quilting to keep everything up. And that has worked out perfectly. It's a little floppier than if I had used a core bond, but I like it. And then finally we have the sewing machine mat. So this fits underneath of your machine. It has these pockets that will hang off the table in front of you to store your commonly used tools. There's a little uh, box of pins, wonder clips, whatever is most common to you. So this uses six of your stars sashed together. You're going to actually make a complete quilted piece for your front pockets and bind the top edge. Make one big quilted piece for the bottom. Top stitch it to the bottom part of your mat and then bind all of the edges to finish it all off. So super quick make. All of this went together really smoothly. Um, and those are the quick swirling stars accessories. So the aptly named Quilted Wall Hangings is a book full of quilted wall hangings. There are 11 projects in this book and I was really drawn to it because they're all really unique. Just from the cover you have a wall hanging that's not completely square. Um, there are some really interesting mosaic style ones. There's some in here that have rounded corners instead of your traditional square. So all of them in here are really unique. Um, I think they're all by different artists. At the end of the book, there is a techniques session where it talks about how to make half square triangles, how to bind a quilt, all of the different techniques used to make the various projects in the book. And then the patterns refer to those techniques. Um, so the patterns themselves are pretty simple and they have you refer back to other techniques if you are not already familiar with how to do those. So we have the mountain wall hanging. I was really drawn to this one because it's in these panels, it's very artistic, it's very different from your traditional quilt that you'd put on a bed, um, which is what I like for a wall hanging. I'm not a huge fan of just putting quilts on the wall. I want something a little bit different. Um, so this one is a mountain sunset scene. The colors in the book are very dark purple, red, the mountain is brown. I wanted something a little bit more like the sunsets that I see at home in Colorado. So I've changed up my colors a little bit from what's in the book to uh, more what I see out my back door. And then actual assembly is really simple. It's all rectangular pieces with a few half square triangles to make the mountain pieces. The assembly instructions in the book are very much, here's the diagram of what it should lay out as. These are the size half square triangles you're gonna make. It doesn't indicate what size you need to square up your half square triangles to. Um, so like what the finished size should be. I had to base that off of the diagram that they provided. So based on that, I was able to figure out these larger ones needed to be four and a half inch squares when they were done, for example. That was really the only complaint I had with the um, pattern. Everything else went together smoothly. As you're sewing, just check occasionally to make sure that your seams line up from one panel to the other as you assemble them from bottom to top. Make sure your seam allowances don't get off anywhere. 
and I didn't actually have to make any changes as I was sewing. They all worked out perfectly, so don't stress too much there. For the quilting, it is fusible fleece on the inside instead of regular batting. Um, that made it a lot easier to quilt and then stitch my backing on. I did do continuous quilting across the panels. Um, and to accomplish that, I just used a choco liner chalk marker when they were all laid out on my cutting table and drew my lines across them so that as I picked up each panel, I knew where to quilt. Then you just take your backing fabric. I just used plain muslin because it's not going to be seen. Right sides together, stitch around all four sides and turn. Uh, the example in the book is not top stitched on the edges. I top stitched mine because I thought that brought out the framed feel of it and it makes them lie flatter than if I hadn't top stitched. Um, and then they are just mounted on a dowel rod with some jute twine and these little loops are sewn in when you sew your backing on. So really a quick sew for such a unique project. The dream catcher from the Quilted Wall Hangings book is and the name is pretty obvious, it looks like a giant dream catcher. Uh, this one is really unique because it uses a large 23 inch quilting hoop as a frame. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any of those that we could order in, but they're really inexpensive at like Joann's. I think it was maybe $4 at most. Um, and then the quilt itself is mounted into the frame with embroidery floss. And then finish off with some matching yarn hanging from the bottom. The hexagon quilt itself is made up of a whole bunch of equilateral, equilateral triangles. When you are looking at the pattern, um, the amount of yardage they call for for each color in here is way overkill. They call for a quarter yard of fabric for each of these colors, and then have you cut one, two and three quarter inch strip from each of them. So you can definitely get this out of your scrap bin. Um, that's what I did. And let's see here, there are three main colors and two accent colors. So I have my two blacks and then three green blue fabrics. The other flaw in the instructions they tell you to use a 30 degree triangle ruler to cut your equilateral triangles. If you know anything about geometry, you know that that doesn't work. You need a 60 degree triangle ruler. Um, so definitely make a note of that. Other than that, probably a typo, honestly. This pattern goes together really quick. The strips, you're just gonna take your triangle ruler and alternate cutting right side up, upside down, down your strip. It is made in six triangle pieces. So one, two, etc. So you'll make your main triangle pieces and then sew the two halves and then sew the whole thing together. Went together really fast. There are clear diagrams for color placement in the book. Um, and then the other alteration I made to the pattern is she well, the author of this particular one, has you quilt this to a backing and then take another backing and stitch them right sides together and turn it. I didn't think I needed two backings in mine, so I just quilted straight to my batting. I don't have that extra backing in there. And then I did the stitch right sides together, turn and top stitch all the way around. Once the top is made, you're just gonna take embroidery floss and attach it to each of the corners and go around your hoop here. And then yarn on the bottom. I just took my long loops of yarn, folded them over and pulled it through the loop so there's no fancy knotting here. And to get the triangle shape at the very bottom, I actually laid it out on my cutting table, made everything nice and flat, and used my rotary cutter to cut the extra yarn off to get those nice and straight. So that is the dream catcher. Eddie's in the Space Time Continuum is a mid size quilt that uses Creative Grids Pineapple Trim Tool and Pineapple Trim Tool Mini. So the main blocks in here are pineapple blocks, 
with the colors strategically placed to make the spiral effect. When it comes to actually sewing everything together, it's pretty easy to assembly line your blocks because the larger size blocks are actually just built off of the smaller ones. So once you've made one or two and you have the technique down, you can start and sew all of your you know, small blocks, which then build into the eight and 10 inch blocks or the four, five and six inch mini blocks that are on the outskirts. The biggest challenge of this quilt is probably all of the cutting. There are a lot of pieces just to fill in all of the space. And then each of these blocks does have a lot of little pieces to it. The cutting instructions are written in such a way um, that there is as little waste as possible in your fabric. And then my biggest tip is just keep all of your like piece sizes together. So if there's a one and a quarter inch by four, keep all of those pieces together. Organize them by size and then you'll have everything where you need it as you start to sew your blocks together. The pineapple trim tool makes the pineapple blocks a breeze to sew together. Um, it's a little, I, I think of it as similar to paper piecing. You start with your center square, you sew rectangular pieces onto each side of it, and then using the squares on the pineapple trim tool, you actually trim off the excess to make your offset square, sew the next round of pieces on, use the trim tool to trim off the excess, and continue to make your offset squares, and you make your seam allowance as you go, much like you do with paper piecing. Um, this just eliminates the need for a foundation paper and all of that extra work that can come along with it. So you have all of your different size pineapple blocks, and then it's finished with just a simple flying geese border. And the instructions do tell you how to make four flying geese at once. So they go a lot faster using that technique. And that's pretty much it. When I decided to quilt this, I used a star quilting pattern to kind of give a more of a spacey feel. And for even more fun, I used glow in the dark thread. Um, it's the Aurora brand thread. And it went through my quilter like no problem. I didn't have to make any adjustments to the quilter. It worked just as well as any quilting thread. So if that's something you wanted to try, feel free to experiment with different kinds of thread in your quilter. It's not going to hurt it. Um, and you just end up with a cooler finished product. So this is Eddie's in the Space Time Continuum. Thank you for joining us for July's So Fun. We hope to see you again in August. Once you finish filling out your wish list, Give your local Rocky Mountain Sewing and Vacuum Store a call to have them get your items ordered for you.